Washington Bridge upper and lower levels. 40 minutes at the Lincoln Tunnel, 20 minutes at the Holland Tunnel from the Turnpike better from 1 and 9. Alternate side parking is in effect, and don't forget it's a gridlock alert day. And if you see a traffic incident, call it into the tip line at 877-466-1010. Twice a week, you either figure out something to do with a tiny little chunk of your morning, mm -hmm. or you spend it sitting on your ass in the car. No cars can be parked on the street between, what is it, 9.30 and 11, depending on which day it is, so that the street sweeper can go by. Now, of course, they don't always clean them, but sometimes they do. So you have to move it across the street so they can clean it, and if you don't move it, then they ticket you, and they tow you, and they do crazy things like that. Alternate side of the street parking is uh, supposedly a, a way to keep the streets clean, keep people from just parking more or less permanently on the street so the street cleaner can't come through. And I believe it was invented or at least put in under the regime of a uh, sanitation commissioner named Paul Scrivain. Uh, again, I'm in the business of cleaning streets, but I don't want to clean them any more frequently than is absolutely necessary. So you have to double park. So you have to park up against the cars that are already parked on the other side uh, to allow the street cleaner to go by, uh, and then you wait some more. It's really not legal to double park and block somebody and leave your car. That's not really legal, but it is on this block um, with a note. So that's what we do. In, in different neighborhoods, people do different things. Everybody, though, has the anxiety at whatever is the start time. If it's 8 o'clock or it's at 11 o'clock, that anxiety is there. And you have to come down before 9.30 because you have to find a place to double park. And then when you double park, you have to sit in your car until 9.30. It's not just... There's a, a big chunk of your morning is spent sitting in your car doing nothing. So you're waiting for, sometimes it's Godot, and sometimes it's the street sweeper. It always seemed so insane to me. But then when I came here, and everybody knew what to do, and told me what to do, I thought it was just funny. I think people sitting in their car with nobody bothering them, talking on the phone, catching up on their reading, or in their crossword puzzles is probably a very peaceful situation. <laughs> In New York, it's, uh, it's a kind of a religion with people. I've heard someone say once, if, you live in, if you're talking about alternate side parking, keeping your car on the street in New York, you can either have a job or you can have a car. One or the other. Well, you know, I mean, for a certain type of obsessive personality such, such as mine, uh, I just can't abide spending multiple hundreds of dollars a year for a garage. I just, you know, it's not in my nature. I remember when we first had a car, uh, we found a place and it was 315, 315 a month. And that was, oh my God. So that, that was nine, you know, around 911 something. Cause that's when we got a car around 911. <laughs> I needed to know I could escape. I mean, it doesn't make sense cause I probably couldn't move, but anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, now that, that lot, I think, is like 500 and something. And that's probably cheap. It's not worth it. If I, if I had a brand new fancy car, maybe, but probably not even then. I, I'm a New Yorker, real New Yorkers park their car in the street. And there's a whole bunch of us who do the same thing. M move from one side of the street to the next side of the street. We say hello, you know, in the morning. I run, I run out of the building usually because I'm late, so I, I scream at the doorman, I, hi, bye, I'll see you ladies, go move in the car, he said, yes, move in the car, I gotta go, can't talk now, because if I'm five minutes late, these crazy meter maids, you know, they, they like, wait, they stalk you. Extremely aggressive, and I'm sure that they have a quota. I have this computerized system now where they just um, take like the, um, the barcode off of the registration 
right? They take it in it's like this compact thing and they could print out a ticket in less than 10 seconds. And then they go to the next car and they get him. See, the reason, you know, what they do that is most of the time, I think, you know, just is make the money on it. Because some people is late, some people, you know, uh, doesn't want to move or something, you know. So one, you know, that is all business. That is all money for the city. You know? it, it, is a, it is a big business. So parking ticket business is probably in excess of a, a half billion dollars uh, business for the city of New York. So it's worth it for them to invest in traffic agents. I've gotten a ticket when my head's down. Yeah. And if I'm out of the car and my head's down and I'm not paying attention, I've gotten a ticket. It only happened to me once, but... Of course, it's like arguing with a baseball umpire. You know, you lose. It's not a fun job. You don't grow up saying, I want to be a traffic agent. Uh, and when I used to give the pep talk, to a graduating class of traffic agents, I would say to you, to them, nobody is going to come up to you and say, thank you for writing me that ticket for blocking the street because the street cleaner couldn't get through. Uh, nobody is gonna say, thank you for towing my car because I was blocking a bus line. So what I would do at the graduating class is I would say thank you to everybody in advance because nobody else is going to say it to you. As we've discussed, I'm not entirely sure the street cleaner has come through this morning. And if he, if he does, we're going to be obliged to move to the other side of the street, double park until he gets through, and then come back over here which is always a big scramble. It's a sort of musical chairs, and if there's anyone extra, you lose your... Sh and you're right at the front, and you can't back up. I'm not sure where you would be, yeah. And then you have to go around the block, forget it, then your spot is gone. It, you know, so everybody then follows the street cleaner, you know, at, at, as close as possible to get back a spot. It's about that time for, for the hell to begin. I believe it is 10, 1040. I see the flashing lights. Here he comes. So you see this happening here? These people are, you know, trying to do their extra double parking. I'm moving because all these cars are coming and I am not. I'm going. I'm going to usually back up a little too much. This is a rarity for me. I never go around the block. Around the block is, it's kind of like when, when you're rolling dice and you get, you know, craps. That's kind of around the block. And I never know the size of my car, so I always have to. I could back up a little. And I'm also, I'm a very conscientious parker. But I kind of love it. I actually like to park, so this doesn't bother me. Like parallel parking is, you know, maybe number 13 on my hobby list. I love to parallel park. <laughs> the in 
anxiety of thinking that it's highly possible and the um, and that you may be in a fight, get in a fight <laughs> with somebody because they're not going to be nice. No one's nice in that moment. You're also pissed that you had a spot and you thought you were done. You were just sitting in your car reading your times, and then you have to move. And then somebody who's just pulled into the block takes a you know comes right in because the street's now been sweeped. You know, and and the sweeper's in front of that car. So you know, it's just a dog eat dog. Well, New Yorkers are a really a funny breed. For some reason, they think free parking is a God-given right. They also admire parking spots. They will talk about parking spots. They will be at a cocktail party and say, you can't imagine the parking spot I got. And of course, if you're not parking for, for as we say, good for tomorrow, if you're just, say, going to somebody's house for dinner in a difficult place to park, and I always think if you get a beautiful spot when you arrive, then the dinner party has to be pretty good to top that. How can you get excited about a parking spot? But in New York, we get excited if we had a great spot. We get excited if we were able to fit our cars into a spot that left one inch in front and one inch behind. I mean, we pride ourselves on our ability to parallel park. So finding a parking spot is sport in New York City. I mean, I'm an advocate for streets getting cleaned. Um, and around here, we seem to need it twice a week, but it's a big pain in the neck. There must be a, there might be some easier way to do it. I don't know. Now I'm good for, uh, what is today? Friday? Three whole days. Three whole days of peace and quiet. No, it's almost time. God, we only have another two or three minutes and we're safe. They can't do anything to us then, can they? I am good now until Thursday. 10.59. My husband's going to yell at me because I didn't lock the wheel. But I don't, have, don't tell him. I don't know how to do it. And I don't want to ask so him. you got this, right? I got this. I don't think anybody actually enjoys it. I think some people mind it less. I think you get a, you're kind of locked into it and it's, it's sort of fun for a while, but then it gets pretty frustrating. Also, there's no way to give up. I'd use the car more often if it wasn't for the fact that I have a good parking space. If you have a good parking space, it's like gold. That's for sure. If I had it in a lot, I would use it much more. Because you just call up the lot, you tell them to get your car out, you bring it, it's easy. But that's a, it's a rich man's uh, life. Everybody needs a hobby, and this is a New York City hobby. As I might say this, I think we all recognize that it is definitely an inconvenience to the motoring public. On the other hand, I think the health of the community and the children of the people who live in that community is more important than the inconvenience caused to some of the motorists in the area.